Welcome to Cooking 100 Year Old Recipes. I'm so glad you're here. In this episode, I'm starting a bonus series of some recipes from my favorite cookbook from my, I guess still my childhood. If you saw my channel trailer, you know that I really began a love of cooking before I even hit my teen years. And at that time, there was no food network, there really was no internet, and cable was in its infancy. The only cooking knowledge I could get without taking formal training was to watch PBS on Saturdays where we would see Julia Child and Jeff Smith, the frugal gourmet. In our mailbox in my family home, we got an offer for this cookbook and it was an agreement that they would send, I believe, 10 pages each month. And my mother and I were very excited and thought we'd give it a try. Once we started cooking from the book, actually I did with her supervision at first, everything we made was so wonderful. These are not just good recipes, they are fantastic. And I wanted to share them with the channel because they're too good not to share. And in this first episode, I'm going to be making meatloaf roulade. This is a simple way to dress up regular meatloaf. I know a lot of people love meatloaf and this is a delicious version. So let's go into my kitchen and get started on this retro recipe. I'm going to make the carrot and onion puree. I'm going to get these carrots peeled. It's about two pounds of carrots to make enough puree to fill the meatloaf. While the carrots simmer for about 25 minutes, I'm going to saute the onion. And then part of the onion will go into the carrot mixture and then the other part will go into the meatloaf. And I think it's best to always pre-cook your onion before you put it into your meatloaf mix. So I'm just breaking up some biscuits. I love using biscuits and meatloaf instead of bread and it needs about a cup of breadcrumbs. So getting all of that ready. So all the seasoning and breadcrumbs will be mixed first, including the egg, before adding in the meat to give it, um, to make sure it gets really well combined when you do it in that order. So I have my ground pork and ground beef in here. So I'm just going to combine everything. And then when the onions cool down just a bit, I will add them to this mixture. And the carrots are almost done. And I've drained my carrots. They're tender now. And I'm going to add the sauteed onions and then mash these together for the filling. Season it with a little bit of salt and pepper so that the filling tastes just as good as the meat mixture. And I'm going to mash with the immersion blender. meatloaf mixture. Let me double check the measurement. Let's see. 
14 by 10. You can use wax paper, but I have a whole container of uh, parchment sheets, so I'm using them. fingers. <clears throat> I'll start shaking a little bit with my hands before I roll it. I'm going to use an offset spatula because I have a very well stocked kitchen with my tools where you can use whatever you like. And then evenly space the carrot puree. And I have the oven preheated to 350 so these warm carrots will not be in contact with the meat for long before it goes into the oven. Just like you would do if you've ever done a jelly roll cake. But you don't want it right at the edge because it'll spread as you fold it. Oops. This is a nice way to just dress up a everyday meatloaf with just the extra step of putting the carrots inside. way forward. It's always heavy. Turn this to the side to get see a little bit better. Seal it when I put it down on the baking pan. Right, so I have a foil lined baking pan, and this is the Reynolds, um, what is this? the nonstick. If you can find this, sometimes this is just a really great foil to have. All right, so I'll put this transfer on the pan. Actually, this is my same size. I'm gonna just flip it. This will work. Shimmy it over a little bit. Mm -hmm. Put the glaze on. Mm -hmm. up against the edge there. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to make the glaze. 
So the glaze is dry mustard. Let's see how much. Quarter teaspoon. Ketchup. About a half a cup. doesn't come out in a big clump. So now it's going to go in the oven and bake for, let's see, let's bake for an hour. And I'll check it, of course, with the thermometer because, you know, I always say check everything. Check your chicken, check your bread, always get the temperature going. So I'm going to tidy this up and then also get the sides together. So I am making mashed cauliflower and... Either green beans or steamed broccoli. I love vegetables, so I try to have as many as possible with every meal. So I'm definitely going to have mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. cool for a good 30 40 minutes before I cut into it otherwise it would just lose its shape give it a taste I'm sure it's delicious why wouldn't it be right <laughs> mm, yes it's wonderful very nice. Yum. Such a wonderful comfort food and a tasty way to make a meatloaf. I hope you like this little retro look back at some 80s food. I'm excited to do some more of them now and then between the 100 year old recipes um, I will see you in the next video